Hello traders, hope you're having a great week. In this video, we'll talk about supply and demand. We'll start with supply and demand definition, how to spot and draw valid supply and demand zones on your charts, and then we'll talk about the difference between support and resistance and supply and demand. So let's get started. To explain supply and demand in a simple way, I'll give you a traditional trading example. Let's say I have a shop and I'm selling TVs. Almost 50 clients are waiting outside, waiting to buy my equipment. But I only have 10 TVs. So I higher the price because even if 10 clients find it expensive, I still have 40 clients interested in buying my TVs. So when the demand gets higher, prices go up. However, if I have 50 TVs and only 2-3 clients are interested in buying it, I'll have to lower the prices to make it more attractive to more clients. So now we know what is supply and what is demand. Let's open our charts and look for live forex supply and demand examples. Hello again traders. Before we apply supply and demand on our charts, I want to give you another example so that you understand the mass psychology behind supply and demand. Uh, let's say I'm used to buy a, a bag of rice for like one kilogram for five dollars. Yesterday I went to the supermarket and found that it's now six dollars. It's one dollar higher. Um, and you know, maybe the one dollar won't affect me much financially, but I'm used to buy that same bag of rice for five dollars. So I won't pay that one dollar extra and I'll try to find an alternative for another bag of rice of one kilogram for five dollars. And because it's human nature, many clients just like me won't buy that bag of rice for six dollars and wait for it to drop to its original price to start buying it again. So after one or two weeks, the rice company notices that its sales are dropping very fast and it has to lower its prices again to be, to be able to sell its stock. When it comes to forex or trading in general, the same rule applies and here instead of rice, we have EURUSD H4. So let's take a quick example. Let's say here you are a trader and you woke up or you, you are even looking at your chart and you see that big spike up. So many traders won't buy this one as they believe they are so late now and they missed the big move. So uh, just like our rice example, this one is considered expensive for some traders and won't buy it unless price retested to its original uh, uh, area where price went up from. So this area becomes a demand uh, area as traders will be looking for buy opportunities around it considering it's a fair price. There are many ways to draw our areas. Uh, what we call a base it can be formed with one candlestick or many uh, many candlesticks in this case it's only a one candlestick base and it's usually the last couple of candles of or the last candle uh, before the big spike happens and many traders take into consideration that big spike here but uh, anyway do not worry about how to draw it the proper way as we won't use it for entry supply and demand are not a standalone strategy we will use supply and demand to add extra confluence for an existing setup uh, one more thing there are two types of supply and two types of demand uh, in this case we have a drop base rally or what we call uh, DBR. Now let's take a look uh, about a supply example. Here we have a supply zone, as you can see a big candle, momentum candle to the downside. So many traders saw this one here and say, no, I'm not going to sell this one because it's giving me a bad risk to reward ratio and I'm already late, feeling in pain. So I won't sell this one. I'll wait for a retest to look for sell opportunities. So this one becomes a supply zone and um, just like this example, we can draw our zone from, uh, from the last candle here, as you can see the last bullish candle. In this case, it's a one candlestick base and we will consider it as uh, our supply zone. Some people cons uh, would like to, to extend it to cover the, the movement before the reversal happens, but I honestly like to uh, minimize it in a way not to bother my eyes. Uh, and again, again, because I will not be looking for sell uh, to sell this one just after it retested uh, our supply zone. 
uh, but I will be looking for sell opportunities around this one because uh, as we mentioned supply and demand are not a standalone strategy and we will be looking for sell opportunities around it and won't sell it immediately after a retest so in this case we have a rally base and then drop or what we call RBD and in this particular example we've got a uh, a trend line here as you can see or even a channel let's make it in purple or even a channel we've got a supply uh, zone and maybe we have divergence let's add an ACD and take a look here we go price is making higher highs while MACD is making lower highs so we have a divergence here a channel in purple and a supply zone so here we have a three confluences valid setup and we'll be looking for sell opportunities at the trend line break downward so as you can see it's always better not to rely on supply and demand uh, blindly but to look for objective setups around it for two or three more clues uh, to buy or sell around our supply and demand zones and one more thing the stronger the move from our supply or demand zone the bigger the impact would be on its retest so in this example this supply zone is stronger than this uh, demand zone because the candle the momentum candle from it as uh, bigger than this one now let's delete our MACD and look for more supply and demand examples here we have another supply zone as you can see the base is formed from many candles and not just one candle like this one so here in this case our base is all the range before a momentum candle to the downside happens so in this case here we have a supply zone and just like the other example the previous one it's a rally base drop okay so it's an R B D and here's an example of a demand zone formed by a base and not just one candle like this one and I always like to make my supply uh, zones in red and demand zones in blue so let's let's change it Here we go and you can always extend it to to cover the spike before the movement uh, upward and um, as mentioned we will be looking for buy opportunities around our, our demand zone and will not enter buy immediately after the retest so in this case for example we've got a trend line and a double bottom pattern let's make it in purple and we, we will not buy after a retest of the demand zone but we'll be looking for buy opportunities so here we go we have a pattern a trend line in purple and a demand zone which will be considered as only one confluence or one clue and the entry would be the break above our uh, our trend line or the neckline of the double uh, bottom pattern so here would be our entry or even here at the candle close above our trend line here we also have a supply zone as you can see big momentum candle pushing downwards in this case it's a drop base drop so it's a D B D okay let's make it an red and let's delete our previous uh, gray zone so here, here we have a drop base drop because it's formed with a couple of candles and not just one candle and you can look for sell opportunities when price retests uh, this supply zone again and again supply and demand zones are not bulletproof and should not be used as a standalone strategy we always look for opportunities around our supply and demand zones and not enter immediately after the retest as you can see here in our chart we have many supply and demand zones that price didn't respect let's take some examples and let's change the color let's make it in gray so as you can see here here we have a demand zone okay so price didn't respect it and keep pushing downward and uh, here we have a a supply zone also price didn't respect it 
let's change the color one more time and uh, to give you an example of a rally base rally let's make it in purple here we have a rally base rally okay so here's our base before before price went up so here we have a demand zone let's make it in uh, blue so now we have uh, four four types two types for uh, supply two types for demand here we have a rally base drop rally base drop and uh, for for the for the supply here we have a drop base drop so these are the two types of supply here we have a drop uh, base rally and here we've got a rally base rally the two types for the demand Let's make a quick recap uh, before we explain why and how supply and demand are not like support and resistance. First of all, we learned that uh, we want a big momentum candle to consider it a valid demand or, or supply zone. Uh, our base can be one candle or couple of candles. And the stronger the move from our demand or supply zone, the stronger the impact would be on the retest. Supply and demand zones are not bulletproof or a standalone strategy, so it doesn't matter how how accurate you draw, you draw your uh, your zones, as we are not going to use them as as immediate entry after the retest. We'll be looking for for opportunities for at least two more clues to buy or sell uh, around our supply and demand zones. We have uh, two two types of demand. The first type is a drop base rally so it's a d b r and we have a rally base rally so r b r these are the two types for uh, for the demand zone and exactly the opposite for the supply zone we have a drop base drop so it's a D, B, D, and we have a rally, base, drop. So exactly like this one, rally, base, drop. Now let me find uh, a simple example to show you the difference between support and resistance and supply and demand. Great, here we go. As you can see here, price is stuck in a range between a resistance and support. Let's make this one uh, in blue and keep this one in red. As you may already know, uh, support and resistance are areas where price uh, failed to break at least twice. So in this example here, here we have a resistance area, price failed to break above it here, and then a second time here. So from, uh, from now on, we can start looking for sell opportunities around this resistance area. While here, pr price failed to break below this area here. Here's the first attempt and here's the second one. So starting from here, we can start looking for buy opportunities around this. And as usual, support and resistance are zones and not uh, laser lines on our charts. So here's our uh, support area and here's our uh, resistance area. However, supply and demand are completely different as it's originated from one single untouched point. Let's take an example for the supply. Here we have a supply zone. As you can see, a big momentum candle to the downside and the base is the last bullish candle, right? Here's a base, one candlestick base and here we've got a supply zone. Now it happens that our supply zone is sitting at a resistance area. But as you can see, there are two completely different. The resistance area is originated after uh, two failed attempts, while our supply zone is originated from one single untouched point. So we'll be looking for a sell opportunity around it while we need two previous touches to consider it as a resistance and start looking from here, right? So two points for resistance to start looking for a sell opportunities while only one point is enough for the supply zone to be 
considered a rejection area and start looking for sell opportunities around it and the same thing applies for our demand zone here we have a demand zone as you can see here's our base the last bearish candle before the momentum bullish candle upwards so here's our base and as you can see here we didn't have our support zone yet as price didn't form the second failed attempt so price came down formed a demand zone after that big momentum candle upwards and then after this movement upward we can consider that we have a support area here so again and again uh, our demand area here can be formed with one with a single one untouched point while we need two at least two failed attempts to consider a valid support uh, zone so let's make another example price formed our support uh, area here after the second failed attempt so from this point and this point we've got our uh, support area valid now then price make a retest and formed another a demand zone after that big momentum candle to the upper side so we've got our base here let's make it another color here's our base the last couple of candles before the momentum candle upwards let's make it in gray giving us an opportunity uh, to look for buy opportunities around here as price didn't retest our support uh, zone before going up so let's make a quick recap support and resistance are completely different from supply and demand but sometimes it happens that we have a supply zone around our resistance and a demand zone around our uh, support so here we'll be looking for uh, sell opportunities as we already have two confluences as you can see we have a resistance area and we have a, um, a, a supply zone so let's take a look and look for sell opportunities around it as you can see here price rejected our supply and uh, resistance area and we can look for sell opportunities at the break of this uh, trend line that's it for supply and demand if you have any more questions feel free to leave a comment and i'll see you in the next video